Hello, I'm Russell Hayes, uh, Incident Controller from Scarborough and Rideau Mountain Rescue Team. I've been a member of the team for 16 years. Uh, and today I'm going to take you through the kit and clothing carried and worn by our team members. Each team is individual and has their own needs uh, and will adapt their clothing and equipment to suit their operational area and their, um, their operational needs. Indeed, throughout the year we'll adapt our clothing to suit the climate, the weather, etc. So we'll start with the clothing that we wear. Every team member will typically wear good quality outdoor clothing consisting of a wicking base layer, some sort of appropriate warm layer. Today, not too cold, so just a, a soft shell gilet for me. Um, over the top of that, we'll have our team waterproofs, which I'll just stand up and show you now. So our team uses Paramo jacket and trousers. Again, this will vary from team to team. A few bits and pieces in the pockets, whistles, earplugs, pens. Um, if the weather's not so cold, we might wear the wind shirt, the Mountain Rescue England and Wales issued wind shirt. Again, ideal for keeping the chill out. So let's come down to footwear now. We do insist that our team members wear good quality mountain boots that provide some insulation, warmth, uh, and protection to your feet, help keep your feet dry, give you a good level of grip on rough and boggy terrain. Also provide a degree of ankle protection and ankle support. Some team members also like to wear gaiters, uh, particularly when it's snowy, to keep the snow out the top of the boots and help keep your feet warm and dry. So, the next piece of kit I want to show you is the radio harness. This is worn over the top of other clothing, over the chest, and as the name suggests, it carries our radio. Our Mountain Rescue radio is a VHF radio that allows us to have good quality, reliable communications in remote locations. Something you cannot guarantee with a mobile phone. So what else have I got in here? A couple of aid memoirs. Um, a general team aid memoir that helps with a few useful facts and figures. So you don't have to do some mental maths on the hill. Also a medical aid memoir containing drugs dosages and that sort of stuff. Again, something good to refer to. And then, as you might expect, waterproof paper notepad, various pens, China Graph pencils. And finally, I carry a rope knife, always ready to hand if it's needed. So, moving along. Maps. Our operational area is pretty large, so we've got five maps that cover the bulk of our area. All 1 to 25,000 scale ordnance survey. Um, they're also all laminated, so that makes them durable, resistant to the weather, and it means we can write on them with a trinograph pencil or a permanent marker pen. So, that's the sort of auxiliary equipment covered. I'm now going to look at the Mountain Rescue sack itself. As you can see over here, my rucksack is a high vis yellow. Uh, some team members have high vis rucksack covers on. There's anywhere typically between 40 and 50 litres. This happens to be a 42 litre rucksack made by Scottish Mountain Gear. Um, so let's have a look at the bits and pieces on the outside of the rucksack first. An LED search torch. Nice and powerful, nice and bright, but light and compact and efficient in terms of battery consumption. Let's come around this side. I've got a sling and a carabiner. I carry that just in case I have to stow my rucksack on a roof rack of a vehicle and can tie it down. And finally in this little pocket down here, as you'll find in every jacket pocket of a Mountain Rescue team member, nice trial gloves. So when we're treating a find, a casualty, we can put those on and keep ourselves protected. So let's go through the contents of the rucksack now. We'll start with the lid pocket. And you'll notice a lot of things are organised into dry bags. Okay, a small dry bag. Just unroll it and I'll show you what I've got in here. So, a pair of warm gloves. A warm fleecy hat. A buff. And a pair of emergency mittens should my original gloves get wet or I get cold hands. So what else have I got in here? So this orange mesh bag contains all my spare batteries. There's also a spare pair of boot laces in here and my head torches here. Again, that's my primary torch for when searching. 
reading a map and seeing where I'm going generally at night. Mosquito repellent. We'll come to that time of year, certainly in our area, in the forested areas where mosquitoes are a problem. So some mosquito repellent to help keep the little blighters at bay. Team identity card. Just in case anyone asks us who we are and what we're doing, we have an identity card. And to go with those maps, a compass. This is a good quality silver expedition compass, nice large base plate. Um, glow-in-the-dark illuminations for navigating at night and a row of wooden beads on the string to help me with pace counting. So, we'll now go to the main compartment. This particular rucksack has a zip opening Hi. which allows easy access to the rucksack. Can I... So let's start from the top. This is my PPE bag. It's a small stowable rucksack inside of which I've got my helmet, goggles and rope hoods. My goggles are in their protective case and I've got an elasticated band so I stay secure even in strong winds or under a helicopter. Rope gloves, a pair of pets or rope gloves so when we're doing rope work my hands are protected and I'm not going to get any rope burn. And finally, my Petzl Mountain Rescue Helmet. Tough, durable and dependable. So, let's moving down through the rest of my bag. This little blue stuff sack contains some emergency provisions. Some sweets, some food, if I have to quickly go on a call out. If I have a bigger call out, a large search call out, I'll augment that with a normal pack. A litre bottle of water, just water, so I can drink it or use it to flush out any wounds. Again, on a larger call out, I'd augment that with a flask of warm drink. So, moving down to the other bags, another dry bag. A bit larger this time. Well wrapped up because this contains my spare warm layer. In this case, a mountain rescue mountain equipment Fitzroy jacket to provide me some insulation if I have to stand around in the cold for any period of time. My first aid kit, you may notice this is in two portions. This is my main first aid kit, as you can see quite a bit larger than what an ordinary walker might carry. But in here, a lot of what normal people carry, so bandages, plasters, um, I have a blood glucose meter, pulse oximeter, thermometer, some airway adjuncts, uh, tick removers, tough cut scissors for opening and removing clothing along with a basic provision of mountain rescue drugs that I'm allowed to carry. My second bag is to augment that first one. And that carries a SAM splint, useful for any broken limbs such as wrists or ankles. And some casualty straps. These are large webbing straps with Velcro that we can use instead of a triangular bandage for creating slings, binding limbs together. Very useful, versatile bit of kit. So, getting towards the bottom of the sack now. Duct tape, a million and one uses. Repairing a ripped coat, repairing a rucksack, helping to package a casualty, anything you wish to use it for. Another dry bag. Very similar to the gloves and hats you may recall. But this one contains a couple of pairs of spare socks. So even if my feet get wet, my boots get soaked, I can take them off put some dry socks on and keep on with the task in hand. Finally in this main compartment a group shelter. A small tent without poles. Ideal for sheltering in either for myself or a casualty if I'm going to be staying still for a prolonged period of time. I've got two more compartments to go through. Inside this main compartment I've got a zippered section and in here I've got a couple of light sticks, snap sticks. These are very useful for marking kit dumps, fine sites, that sort of thing. A small bivvy bag, again ideal for myself or a casualty if we need to stay in a one location for any period of time. A medical waste bag, so if we're putting bandages, that sort of thing in once we're dealing with a casualty. 
a spare radio battery. I'm trying to keep that buried in the rucksack to keep it as warm as possible so it keeps it charged for as long as possible. And finally, two high-vis vests. A standard yellow one, which we wear if we're working close to roads, roadsides, car parks, to ensure that we are well uh, illuminated and highly visible. And finally, our sector commander vests which are worn if we are a fine site manager that makes it obvious to other emergency services who is in charge of the scene and running the scene. So that is the complete contents of my call out kit and is typical of what other members of the Scarborough and Rydale Mountain Rescue Team carry. Hopefully that will give you a good understanding of what a Mountain Rescue Team member carries on the hill uh, to help look after themselves and look after anybody that they find. Thank you for watching.